So finally, after nearly five months of wait, Apple has finally released macOS Monterey, their latest major release of macOS, to the public today, or yesterday, or last week, or whenever you're watching this video, I don't know. And it brings some pretty cool features, like a shortcuts app, and a new Safari. But the improvements are actually pretty minor, and it's mostly the same as macOS Big Sur. But some of you guys still might want to update to Monterey to experience the latest features. But there might be one small, small, tiny problem for some of you guys. And that is, yeah, your machine might be too old to even run macOS Monterey. Because this year, Apple has dropped a bunch of older machines, some of them as recent as from 2015, from running macOS Monterey. But don't let Apple tell you whether your device can run the latest OS or not, because today I'm going to tell you that, yes, you can still run macOS Monterey on your older machines. And I'm going to show you how in this video. Let's get the video started. But before we get started, we do need to make some preparations. So you will need a 16 gigabyte or more USB drive, at least like 35 gigabytes of free disk space because some of the installers are going to take up a lot of space. And most importantly, back up your Mac before proceeding because there is always the chance that you'll lose your data and need to like reinstall macOS. So back up your data, use Time Machine, use whatever backup software, just back up your Mac and your files, so if you do lose them, you can always get them back. And in order to do this, we'll need to use a piece of software called a patcher. So for those of you not familiar with patchers, they're basically just programs that tricks your Mac into thinking that it's a newer Mac and therefore allowing to ins to install newer operating systems that it doesn't natively support. Actually, my device, which is the early 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro, I'm actually using a patch on right now to run macOS Big Sur. Uh, it's the patch is called Patch Sur. It's actually quite a good it's a, actually a pretty good patch, it has a full GUI. And yeah, as you can see, I'm running macOS Big Sur on an unsupported model. Uh, but today we're going to use a different patcher. Patch Sur is great, but the developer the, did not come up with a patcher for macOS Monterey yet. I think he did, started doing something else. So today we're just going to use another very good patcher. It's called Open Core Legacy Patcher. Using this, uh, you can get a near native macOS experience. Like, you get support for Fire Vault and all of that secure protection thingies. And you can also get native OTA updates. So instead of having to update the macOS through the Patcher app, you need to do in Patch Sur, which is again the patcher I'm using right now. You do get native updates that right from the System Preferences app uh, and the update, you can install the update from System Preferences. So that's what OTA updates mean. So Open Core, even though it's a bit more difficult to use, it does provide a smoother user experience later. So they do have a pretty comprehensive website that guides you through the steps. But first, you have to know if your model is supported. So basically, if you have a early 2008 MacBook or later, then it is supported, but there is a bunch of issues. Like only the mid-2015 model is fully supported. There are GPU acceleration issues, graphics acceleration issues for the older ones. And for MacBook Airs, uh, the early 2008 model is not supported, but starting from late 2008, yes, it is. But only the mid-2012 and later are fully supported. The earlier ones still have GPU acceleration issues. And for MacBook Pros, only 
the early 2008 model and later are supported, but only the mid 2012s and later are fully supported because, again, because of the graphics acceleration issue. And for Mac Minis, it's from 2009 to later, although only the late 2012 is fully supported. Uh, and for IMAP models, if you have a mid-2007 later or later, then yes, but the mid-2007 model, you do need to do some extra tinkering. And only the late 2012 and later have full support because, again, because of the graphic acceleration issue. And for the late 2014 and mid-2015, 27 inch one, the display will not support the full 5K resolution because because of a bug. And for Mac Pros, it's early 2008 to mid-2012 and everything is supported for only the 2009 and later. Xserve, Xserve, nobody really cares about that. So once you know that your device is actually supported, you can just start downloading it. So now what you gotta do is to open Terminal. So you can just do it right from Spotlight Search, just type in Terminal and hit Enter. And you can just download it right from Terminal. So you just have to copy and paste this command here. Uh, enter, and this will require you to enter your administrator password. And the password won't show up, but yes, it does know that you're entering your password, so just hit enter once you're done. And you'll just scan for, for a bunch of stuff, and now you just have to choose which one you want to download. So for this video, we, we obviously want to download Mac OS Monterey. The latest release right now is, is 12.0.1. So after that, you just have to enter a number. So Mac OS Monterey, that's 5. You just have to click on 5 and hit enter. Now we just have to wait because we are literally downloading the entire Mac OS installer, which is over 10 gigabytes. So we'll just have to wait and I'll come back when it's done. So just wait until it's done downloading the installer so you know when it's done when it says 100 under the percent and this message shows up so now this is where your USB stick is going to come in handy so you just plug it into your computer because we are going to create a bootable USB installer right now so just wait until the USB stick shows up okay now what you want to do is open disk utility you can also search up in Spotlight Search. And what you gotta do right now is to go to the parent uh, partition. Normally macOS only shows you the different partitions you have. Uh, and But you have to like format the parent partition. So just click on View and click on Show All Devices. Go to the parent partition which is the top one, and click on Erase. Make sure it's a USB stick. Call it, just call it My Volume, it'll save you time later. And make sure the format is actually macOS Extended Journaled. And make sure the partition map is set to GUID. So just call it My Volume without any spaces. Format a macOS Mac Extended Journal and choose the GUID partition map. Then erase. And these settings are very important because if one of them is like different from what I showed you, it won't work. So just wait until it's done. And just wait until the formatting is done. So just click on done. And now we just have to create the install USB. So our USB stick is already prepared for becoming a macOS install USB. So we now just have to find the disk image that we just downloaded in terminal right here. So press Command Shift G 
and go to you put this little thingy. I don't know what the symbol is ca called, and the macOS dash installer. You can see it's already provided in the tutorial right here. So just go there, mount the disk image. You can skip the verification. And you can see our Monterey installer right here. So now you just have to, well, move it to the, the applications folder because it's going to be helpful to have it in the applications later. So just wait for it to transfer. It might take a bit long. Okay, so once you make sure that the Monterey installer is in your applications folder, and your USB drive is named My Volume, then you can start uh, creating the install USB. So just copy and paste this command right here. Honestly, you can just go to the website, which I will leave in the description and follow along the website yourselves. But this video is for those that is a bit unclear and unsure on some of the steps and want a video demonstration. So that's honestly the purpose of this video. So now just going to terminal and make sure the Monterey installer application is in the applications folder and make sure your USB is called my volume. And what we also want to do is that you can see the provided command is for macOS Big Sur. So we have to change that to Monterey. So delete Big Sur right here. Make sure to spell it right. M-O-N-T-E-R-E-Y. Monterey. And press enter. Press the enter key. And then just type a capital Y for yes. Then just Press the enter key again, and it's going to create the installer disk for you. So you can just wait. Okay, so now, after probably like an hour or so, you now have your install USB patched created. Now you just have to download the, the open core application or program. So find the latest version, whatever it is, for me at the at the time of the making of this video, 0.3.1. And make sure you download the TUI app because I tried the TUI app, it still like half baked, so it isn't really good. So download the TUI app, you just have to click on it and click on save. And then click on it to unzip and open the app. And once you've done that, open the Patcher app. And first of all, we need to build OpenCore. So just press 1 and enter. And enter again to go back. Then choose 2. Install OpenCore to USB slash internal drive. But we are going to install it to the USB drive. So please select the disk you would like to install OpenCore to and select the USB drive. So the smaller one. That will be two. And you would want to install it onto the EFI partition. So this is important. Make sure if there is multiple disks or partitions showing up, you install it onto the EFI partition. So that will be one. Yeah, you do need your admin password for this. And just wait for it to finish. Press enter to continue, just enter and yeah. It's already installed on your EFI partition and you're good to go. So terminate, terminate. And now you just have to shut down your Mac. Just shut down. After you shut down your computer, plug in the boot USB drive you created earlier, then 
power on your Mac while holding down the option key. It's the smaller key right next to the command key. And just wait until the boot menu shows up. Yeah. And you'll be tempted to select install macOS Monterey, but no, you have to actually select EFI boot with the hard disk icon using the arrow keys and press enter. And then use the arrow keys to select install macOS Monterey, then press enter again. Then you should be greeted with this loading bar with the Apple logo on it. That means you are on the right path and just wait for it to load which will take a while. And next, you should be greeted with this macOS recovery screen. Click on your account and click on next. The display scaling might be a bit weird, but that doesn't really affect anything. So enter a password and click on install macOS Monterey. Continue. Continue. Agree. Install it on Macintosh SSD or Macintosh HD or whatever the, the name of your main drive is. Just install it, click on your main drive and because it's encrypted, you will have to enter your administrator password again. Decrypt it, the continue. And just wait for it to install. It's literally just like any other macOS install installation. Wait for it to restart, update. And yeah, you are almost, almost there. And voila! Now you have macOS Monterey running on your old and unsupported, officially unsupported Mac. With native OTA updates right in the System Preferences app, and it also supports many of the new features from my macOS Monterey, such as the new shortcuts app and the new Siri and everything. There are a couple of caveats and, and some things you do need to know after you, you install it. So if you have a Mac that's like even older than the models I will drop this year, you might experience some graphics acceleration issues. So your Mac might like not have correct display scaling and it's super laggy when you're opening stuff with animations and everything. It's not a problem for me since my Mac is actually new enough to have a metal supported GPU. But if you don't, then you do have to run a post install patch, which I will link in the description of the instructions. And if you want to boot up your Mac after you shut it down, you can just press the power button and let it just boot up by itself. You actually have to press down the option key, then select EFI boot, and then Macintosh HD to boot her computer up. But other than that, it's basically a native experience of macOS Monterey on your old and unsupported Mac. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you found this video helpful. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.